Let's go across to Perth now and catch up with our third Collingwood supporter for tonight, Gemma Tonyini from <laughs> G2 Communications. Good to wrap up the week with you as ever. No doubt you're focusing on the finals now as well, Gemma. Yes, mate, after our disappointing um, match on the weekend, there's only one way to look, and that is forward. So yeah, I'm committed. Indeed. Side indeed, by side. Uh, indeed. Uh, <laughs> we, we took Gemma along to the, the Swans uh, Collingwood game last Sunday, didn't we? Now, tell us about uh, ScoMo. It was brilliant. He's, it was a great day. Um, now, tell us about ScoMo. Uh, I think this is a serious issue. We'll get to that in a moment. But he's being mocked on social media, all sorts of Facebook memes poking fun at him having every job in the country. We'll have a look at some of them here. I reckon good on him for jumping on and responding directly. It, it's... Uh, you know, he, he's been accused of not reading the room and I think it's a really good um, time to remind people that Twitter is by no means the room. It's, no <laughs> mean, it's not a room you'd want to be staying in, that's for sure. It's a room you want to spend as little time in as possible, in my view. I, thi I think it's a tricky one I, and, I, and I personally don't have an issue with him taking the mickey out of himself. This has been an abject disaster for him. Not the original act, Chris, but the way it's been handled. Uh, the contradictions, the... The, the, just the weirdness about the response and the lack of, um, I guess, putting in context, and I love what Sarah Henderson just said before, is cast your minds back to when this was all going down. And again, I'm not necessarily saying it was the right or wrong thing to do, but it's so easy with the passing of time now to, to focus on, on, on that act and... Um, you know, the ridiculousness of a redundancy of one person and not telling your cabinet and all that sort of stuff aside, if we can come out the other side with better transparency, better expectations, happy days. What I don't like to see is um, the, the Prime Minister wasting time on something that has materially hurt nobody. It's materially impacted nobody. I'm not saying that it was the right thing to do and I'm not saying that the handling was correct. It wasn't. But there are real issues facing Australia right now in our communities, cost of living, cost of power, all of these sorts of things, a discussion around nuclear that needs to be had. And the Prime Minister, I don't think, is focusing on what matters. No, he's doing precisely the wrong thing. But I just think on Scott Morrison it was definitely the wrong thing to do. I, I, I think it's very substantial what 100%. he did wrong. Uh, and I think it really undermined uh, Cabinet governance. But I think uh, if he's going to have a laugh on social media about all the jobs that he could do, then that's probably a good way for him to, uh, to deal with it. But he really ought to be I'm a bit... I'm loving it. But yeah. I... He, he should be more uh, yeah, forthright, and right? And that... apologise, not just, not just to well, the, this... his colleagues, <laughs> but to the country and to the parliament. And this is the thing that you were talking about a moment ago about whether he stays in the parliament or not. And I think, yeah, he made that that flippant comment earlier in the week. I think it was to Kieran Gilbert about, well, I'm not watching the news because I'm not yeah. in, I'm not day to day in the politics anymore because I'm not the prime minister. Mate, you are still an elected member of parliament, so do the job or find another job. And I think the risk with his, the, the you know, the meme, the fun with the memes that he's having is, you know, you're still very very well paid to be a local MP. And, you know, make light of the, the memes. It sort of sounds like he's making light of actually what he did. And for me, Chris, so much of the Morrison administration that didn't make sense to me, particularly in the last year of it, now makes a lot of sense. That's all I'm, I'm going to say on that. No, you, you are spot on. Now, what you did mention also is the way that Anthony Albanese is not concentrating on the issues that uh, he really needs to tackle. I, I am seeing a slow right. motion train wreck here on climate and energy policy. Mm. We are just we are accelerating yep. down uh, uh, this hill to oblivion when you look at what's happening in Europe. And they've done it again today with Chris Bowen going out there and uh, doing a, a U-turn on electric vehicles. And uh, he's going to change the laws effectively to force us into electric vehicles. Here's some of what he had to say. The time for cheap politics, for saying it'll end the weekend or take away use, is over. Australians want a sensible discussion about how we can get cheaper, better cars in Australia. We're in a cost of living crisis. Petrol's very expensive. If you have an electric vehicle, you never need to lift the nozzle at a petrol station ever again. There's the answer, Gemma. If these things are so bloody good and so bloody cheap, then just let people buy them and get government and tax subsidies and, and, and force rules right out of the equation. 
I mean, my view is Mr Bowen is radically undercooked in this portfolio. He is unconvincing. He is parroting lines from, you know, the Greens are us um, playbook. If, if EVs are in fact so wonderfully a panacea for every single person of every social demographic in this country, take the subsidies away, let the market decide, take all of the subsidies away and let's see them stand on their own two feet. And if you're a single income family or if you're a, a, a single parent family or you're a pensioner, you're a person on um, limited means and you are struggling and living paycheck to paycheck, do you really think this policy is going to resonate with them? And the thing about the green energy push that this federal government is harnessed to with the Greens, it is mortgaged its soul, the Labor Party has, to the Greens in this respect, is it hurts the most vulnerable in our community. It hurts the most vulnerable in socioeconomic demographics. It's fine if you live on the harbour. It's fine if you live in the inner west of Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, Brisbane. It's fine. But if you're a person who, as I said, is living hand to mouth and has seen the cost of living in their power bills and their food bills go up exponentially over the past six months, do you really think EVs is going to be their panacea? Do you really think they're going to go, fantastic, my food's going to be cheaper, I'm just going to go get myself a Prius? I tell you what, what you just said is what I would expect to hear from a right of centre politician, someone representing a mainstream political party, but instead, this is what we get from Simon Birmingham. We should expect to see, uh, in a sense, regardless of emission standards, that you will see uh, more low emissions electric vehicles, hopefully hydrogen vehicles or others, uh, coming onto the marketplace because that's where the market is heading and it's about making sure that Australia is prepared for that transition. Yeah, so the Labor Party is just uh, ruining the economy down this green energy net zero path and Birmingham's just cheering them along all the way. Mr Birmingham talks about a market. It's not a market if it's subsidised up the wazoo. <laughs> yes. That's a, su that's a subsidised product. Take the subsidies away and let the market decide. I just think that's a, a, a foolish thing for him to say. Mr Birmingham should be talking about uh, the need for a discussion about nuclear. If we want to look to, new to Europe, all we need to know about how successful um, the European race towards uh, you know, renewables has been is the fact that the European Union miraculously declared gas and nuclear to be renewables. Isn't it amazing what a looming winter can do, Chris? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, but we look at Europe and instead of taking lessons, making sure we avoid their pain, we're trying to catch up with them. Bowen actually holds out Europe as the example to catch up with. It's, it's frightening. Hey, yeah, speaking well, of Europe, but could you tell me the name of the uh, Prime Minister of Finland? General knowledge quiz? Oh, it's the lady whose name starts with M and I think her surname is Sana and she's a wicked dancer from what I can tell. Her name is Sana Marin. She's a 36-year-old woman. That's the and, one. And have a look at her party. Now, I always like to hang out with politicians, so I'd probably happily party with the, with the Finnish Prime Minister. She's in a bit of <laughs> she's been in a bit of strife for, over that video. Apparently, people are demanding a drug test. Oh, I mean, look, I, it's funny. After I saw that video, I, I googled a bit about her, and in every public facing piece of coverage I could find, she was incredibly appropriate the, the picture of a of a, a states person a stateswoman she's allowed to let her hair down with her friends i mean who which of her friends leaked that to the media if, if indeed it was leaked or published on a public platform i mean you know if that's the worst she can do she's not like she's sylvia berlusconi having bunga bunga parties i think you know she's a 36 year old woman partying with her friends Indeed. She's allowed to do it. She is allowed to do it. I think there's no drug testing required. I think she'll be looking for phones None. next time. Have a great weekend and get everyone <laughs> to put their phones away.